Salutations, my people! Thanks for coming back to the Music Bin and subscribing to our YouTube channel. That is awesome. Uh, this is episode 12 already. I'm Doug James. Welcome. Uh, and it's been a month since we checked in with um, our partners on the business side of this musical endeavor of live music. I'm talking about the venues and the booking agents. Uh, you're going to meet a couple of interesting guys today from the Rouse Center for the Performing Arts, CEO and Artistic Director, plus a fellow baseball enthusiast, Mr. Richard Caranda. By the way, uh, that's in Crystal Lake, the uh, Rouse Center. Uh, but first, here's a guy with quite a story. He's the uh, co-founder and president of Bash Schuler Entertainment in Chicago. Um, also a potentate, Grand Poobah, and the Big Kahuna. Here's Scott Bass. We've got Scott Bass with us today from uh, Bass Schuler Entertainment Group. They are huge. That means large. Uh, for those of you who don't know, how you doing, Scott? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing, Doug? Not too bad. Not too bad. You're keeping busy. I know that. We had to kind of we had to do this a little early today, but uh, we're going to hook you up with, uh, later on. With uh, we're going to do another interview with Richard Caranda uh, from the uh, Rouse Center. But I was so glad that you could join us because your story, aside from the information that you hold within, um, uh, I think you've got one of the coolest stories I've ever heard. Uh, tell me uh, and tell everybody about uh, your lineage and in particular, Uncle Ralph. Oh, my Uncle Ralph. Um, well, he um, was a producer at Chess Records here in right. Chicago, which, of course, is the legendary Chess Records, the blues label right. that all, the, all those guys recorded on, Muddy Waters and Holland Wolf and Etta James and Chuck, and, Berry. And Chuck Berry and, yeah, everybody. So he told me, yeah, yeah, I've heard lots of stories about those days. No doubt. He, um, he was, you know, he was strictly into African American music, R and B and jazz. He toured in the, you know, he did shows in the, down in the South in the forties and fifties and toured with all those acts and uh, told me all about that scene with, you know, except the hotels and, you know, the, oh my God. The Green uh, Book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but he, and he, he basically discovered James Brown. So he recorded James Brown's first big hit, Please, 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 when he was at a, he was at a label called King Records out of Cincinnati, which is a, a, a really cool label. There's a really cool book about King Records. Um, I read, why am I forgetting the name of it? But, you know, it was basically, um, Cincinnati being right on the border of the north and the south, right on, or, you know, you can walk across a bridge and you're in Kentucky, right? From Cincinnati. So it was sort of a, an amalgam, you know, it was just sort of a mix of coming together of, of uh, black southern rhythm and blues and hillbilly music, they called it. Back then, I guess they, they called it race music yes. and hillbilly music yeah. and combined it kind of turned into early rock and roll and rockabilly and yep. and all that. It was the per perfect spot on the map to have all that converge in a way. Yeah. And then he moved to chess. He, uh, he told me all sorts of fun stories. He told me about when the Stones first came to uh, America, their first tour. And, you know, they all, all the English. Or music, total awe. Sure. That whole generation. I mean, they, you know, the, the Clapton and the Stones and the Beatles. I mean, they look to Chicago and 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 uh, chess in particular as being like, you know, the Holy Land. And they would they would come here just to, you know, it was it would be like all of us going to Abbey Road. Right. Exactly. Kind of, right. Yeah. Kind of thing. So um, he. So he. Yeah. You know, he. Yeah. He told me the story of when they came to chess and just walked around and just looked around in awe about how, you know, and they were like little, he said, they were just kids. You know, he also said about the Stones too. He said, they're the only white band, they've got the best rhythm se section of any white band I've ever heard. Yes. <laughs> 
but hard to argue. But he, yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame, Rock yeah. and Roll Hall of Fame. He wrote a song too, didn't he? Didn't he do a? a he co-wrote. Co-wrote, um, this is dedicated to the one I love, which the Mamas and Papas made famous. Um, I think the Shirelles before that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and he did. Um, he produced like the early, the, the first versions of of the Twist and Kansas City and all sorts of things. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's 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 cool. Yeah, it is very cool. So, what about you? Did you grow up in Chicago? I grew up in a suburb of Chicago. Yeah, um, and um, How, what yeah. brought you to Bass Schuler Entertainment Group? How did you get there? Well, I, I was a musician for many years. Um, I was in one of the early, very first punk bands here in Chicago. Do you know Stump Mahoney? I vaguely know that name. Yeah, he, he's a executive producer at Foot Conan Building for many years. And the whole time he was an executive producer at an advertising agency, he was in a punk band. We used to go see him every now and then. <laughs> what was the name of the band? I was afraid you were going to ask me that. Um, this escaped me. I'll find out tomorrow because I'm sure he'll, he'll he'll get back to me on that. You don't remember yeah, back, my band. Back in the late 70s, yep. they actually say that we were the first punk band in Chicago. But I, we weren't. But I'll take it. We were <laughs> called Tutu and the Pirates. And it was, uh, it was, it was pretty popular there for a while. You a drummer? Or you a guitar player? Guitar player. Guitar player. So we used, you know, we played with bands like the Ramones and yeah. all those that early. It was very underground back then. It was yeah. very, you know, it wasn't like uh, what it is now. But um, so it was pretty much every misfit in the city of Chicago came to see us. They like they were our fans, right? Fun. And then we toured, you know, we toured around the country and did all the punk clubs back. You know, did you say you were from Cleveland? No, no, no. I, I grew up in like in a farm community in Iowa, but I, I was in radio in oh, Philadelphia, right. New York. Yeah, it was Philadelphia, I was thinking. Yeah. yeah Philly. Yeah, I spent I spent about four years and four and a half years in Philly, five years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. so yeah. Have- it, so so you uh so you you grew up in the burbs here, uh you were in the punk band, and then mm-hmm. what brought you to uh do what you do now, being an agent basically? Well, we um you know, when the band was finally on its last legs back in the, the late 80s, I, it, there were a series, there were other bands. I, it, it, it wasn't just that first band, uh, the Pirates, and then there were some other bands, and it was like, okay, enough of this. I'm I'm tired of lugging my equipment out of n- diving nightclubs at three in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... Um, yeah, I mean the, the the scene the scene here in Chicago back then was was a lot of fun though. It was like, oh my, there was there I could, there's some great stories. But they were, you know, I think a lot of the clubs I think were back then were actually still owned by like the mob guys, which was pretty great. We were we were the house band for a while downtown at Mother's. You know the club. Oh Mother's, yeah, Vision sure. and Rush. Oh yeah, uh, I I know <laughs> that one of their. Um... One of their bouncers was a, a neighbor of mine. This this boy, this tells you how people will grow up. He wound up being a neighbor of mine in Park Ridge, but he was a bouncer at Mother's. For, he got back from Vietnam, Ron Kurowski. He got back from Nam, and he, uh, does that name sound familiar? Kind of does. Kind of a big fella. Yeah, they well, they are. But <laughs> it, it was, you know, it was a kind of a rock club, like a, a heavy metal rock. And then, you know, these guys who owned that club saw that we were doing really well around town. So they said, why don't you just be like our regular band here? Oh, nice. And it, was, it was pretty, it was fun. But, you know. So, we, you were, so from, from a, you were kind of like what the doors were to the uh, Troubadour, you know, Doug Weston's Troubadour. Okay, I'll take right. that. Yeah, right. Do you remember a club called The Quiet Night? Um. Uh, I didn't get here till 79, but no, I don't recall. That was right when we were kind of at our peak. And yeah. yeah, that's yeah, the quiet night had just closed. It was like a sort of a legendary folk club. And we we convinced the, him to turn it into a, a, a rock punk place. And it ended up being a place called Tuts. Uh, okay, which was Tuts. a pretty well-known club around town back then. Was that like and over was it wasn't near Oak? It was uh, it was in the west it was side. On Elmont Street by the L, right by the L. Uh, Montrose? I can't. No, more like Clark. 
Clark. Oh, on Clark. So it wasn't Clark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but the, the guy, we'd be done at Mother's at three in the morning and we we're 20 year old boys. We we're um, wanting to just continue partying afterwards. And then right at the moment we would like, you know take you know, we're getting all the equipment out we're done for the night the guy the guy the owners would come in with the the you know their their girlfriends and the big hair and the bling and the furs and to collect the cash for the night and they, it was right out of the sopranos it was oh like, man it was great crazy and they would be hey boys come on have another drink with us and we were we we kind of we didn't know what they were do what they were about but we kind of knew <clears throat> so when they would say that we would be like yes sir whatever <laughs> you say sir <laughs> and then we would end up staying with them till the sun came up we uh. just sprawl out onto rush street with the sun um it was those were fun times but then you know the the band um it was it, it went as far as it could go yeah it was sort of a cross between um, the Ramones and Devo and Frank Zappa and the Sex Pistols rolled okay. into one. Rolled so into one. Kind of a bizarre, weird band. And the guy who was <laughs> the, the agent who was um, just kind of signed us to do college tours, um, within a few months of us connecting with him we broke up and i just turned to him and said you need another agent looking for something else to do now folks for, for the guys in the business watching who, who don't know uh bash Schuler is probably number one in the country right with dealing with colleges and, for, and well we're, we're we, we do we're pretty we're pretty yeah we do really i don't know what number one means but we're we're pretty well known in the college market. We work, we have several agents here that um, that's sort of our primary market is yeah. we tour entertainment nationally on college campuses. And right. it's not just music. It's, it's no. actually very little music. Now, without, without We're asking right. you yeah. and being crass and asking dollars, is it the same kind of money or is it? No, no, we, no. Everybody's well, we taking a hit. Everybody. Well, yeah, but we, um, you know, we're, we're eliminating travel costs. So, yeah. If, if a show is say you know whatever three thousand and the plane ticket is 400 you know between travel and hotel costs and rental cars and so forth there's another five or six hundred so we we're just taking off the travel costs and right. doing and they didn't have to buy you know plane tickets to fly right, exactly um uh, you, so you guys out well. when you guys aren't doing the the, the college thing though you do the festival thing, at least around Chicagoland. And, and I'm assuming in other parts of the country too. A little bit. I, Chicago is great because it, you know, I mean, it has a hundred plus communities here in the Chicagoland area, right? All the suburbs and villages and every one of them just about has a summer fest con, you know, concert. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Series. For sure. Or yeah, the, the, the little midweek summer concerts in the park, like the little Ravinia, Style kind of, we do tons of those. Yeah. Um, with uh, mainly, you know, they're sponsored mainly by with by park districts mm -hmm. and some villages and and chambers do some of them. Do you think uh, music fans are going to return? Are they going to? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm looking at the news this. and they're saying they're worried about oh, you know, the spring break and what have you, uh, and getting bumped back up again. But do you, are you, do you feel pretty confident that the fans are going to come back? For this summer, yeah. Well, it's not about the fans. They everybody wants to come back. Don't you want yeah. to go back to, into a go to a movie theater? Oh, I'd love to. Wanna, right? I'd love to. I mean, I'd love to get on stage and perform. <laughs> That's what I'd yeah. like to do. I mean, every is you know we're missing the communal experience of yeah. a lot of entertainment. Whether it's going to a movie and just you know, with it's fun to see a movie with a packed yeah. movie theater if it's a scary movie and everybody's gets scared. This all that. But, um, and of course, concerts, it's not about fans. They're jonesing to come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's what the communities feel are safe. You know, right. I mean, the, here's the issue with the summer festivals and the summer concerts. Last year at this time, and then it, they were still waiting. All the summer events, the hundreds of summer events and festivals and concerts 
they were also okay we're, we're not quite sure we're not quite sure we'll see how every you know people thought maybe this will be over in a month yeah right <laughs> okay. um but you know so but they and then they just sort of all the some all the communities just sort of freaked out how are we going to do this so all the weekend festivals were canceled and yeah. then most of the summer midweek summer concerts there were some towns that saved them i mean i can think of them on one hand i can think from downers grove and atasca to uh, winnetka and northbrook and buffalo grove and a few others they they found ways to do it yeah it was driving movie yeah you know that was a great lot. concept that was a great idea yeah. And some, you know, had big enough parks, Naperville, I remember, I think it was, so we're moving into a different park that's big enough where we can spray paint, or Buffalo Grove, spray paint circles in the grass and we'll have staff designate yeah. where, where yeah. families can sit for social distancing purposes and so forth. So some of them were able to scramble and come up with, you know, a game plan like that. But most were like, oh, we can't. And many communities just don't have the, the, the venue that would work to do that. Right, right. This year, I so I maybe last year, uh, I don't know, 80, 90 percent of everything shut down. Yeah. This year, I think most of the midweek summer concerts are going to be okay. Uh, this is a and, good way to this is a good way to wrap this up because I wanted to ask you uh, kind of a final question to rate your positive outlook for the future. I mean, do you feel good about it? Well, again, I think the, the, the midweek concerts can do it, and they are doing it. They may be cutting back and not doing as many as they do have done in, in years past, but they're doing them. Yep. They can manage it. They're, they're, they had time to think about, okay, we've got to figure out a way to, to, to just, you know, sort of come up with something, and they're doing it. The weekend festivals is what's real dicey, because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the whole point of the entertainment industry is to attract crowds. Yes. Right? Sure. And the festivals on the weekends, I mean, it's not only the bands, the entertainment and children's entertainment. We do a lot of that, too. A lot of the little preschool kid shows we do for, the, for the, uh, these community events throughout the year. Throughout the year, actually. But, you know... They've got the carnival ride companies, the big Ferris wheels and all that, you know, all that stuff. They've got food vendors and beer. I mean, basically, they make all their money selling beer and selling hot dogs. Yeah. Right. And if yep. you don't have, if you can't, if you've got just tons of people packed in line, would you want people breathing all over you while you're in line waiting for a beer at this point? Right. Right. So, I mean, and it's so... You know, I, I think, I don't know how they're going to do it. What about the clubs and the bars? Are they, it's are they okay? It's not my domain anymore. Huh? Um, it's, I, it's not my domain anymore. Oh, um, okay. I, we, we, we stopped booking nightclubs 20 years ago. I wow. told all of them, I just don't have time to do it because of yeah. our college, you know, during the nine months out sure. of the calendar year, we're just doing our college roster and it's nobody around here. It's all the comedy in New York and LA, all those guys. Hey, just, it's okay. It's it's good to be the big fish in a small pond. <laughs> well, I wouldn't you know. Right. But and it's I feel terrible saying this, but our college roster is thriving with because mm. they can do virtual. Yeah. And in college campuses have to do programming. So I think we're, I don't know, we're approaching in the neighborhood of 3,000 virtual shows this school year from wow. August, which is insane. Um, but, and it's special event stuff too, like, you know, we do like murder mysteries and, and escape rooms and, you know, all that, yeah. kind of stuff that the kids love. Yeah. Um, but the local bands who I've been working with for 20 years, yeah. who I love, and I, I just, you know, I'm so worried. I mean, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm worried about them. I mean, yeah, it's tough. I've been devastated since, for a year now because yeah. everything shut down. Right. Where are they going to play? And the summer festival season is an important part yeah. of their, it's kind of like, I think for a lot of bands, it's, it's kind of like holiday shopping season when, when, you know, merchants, they, they make the majority of their annual income in the holiday shopping season. 
I think that's what it's like for a lot of these bands. Yeah. Three, you know, the from Memorial Day through Labor Day and into Oktoberfest and stuff. This is a big part of how they they make a, a living. And, and I know the word with our, our shows, we're downsizing. And, and it, we try to approach the, the uh, performing arts centers. Yeah. I, I, I'm not so much going to the bars and the clubs, although downsized, we've got guys who want to. And I've got about 45, 50 musicians, and I'm not going to tell them, well, no, you don't want to do that. You got to be, be safe and be smart about it. But with the performing arts centers, it's tough. And we're going to talk to Richard Coranda next um, about that uh, from the Rouse Center, uh, the performing yeah. arts in, in, in uh, Crystal Lake. But uh, I hate to wrap this up, Scott. Man, we could. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, we could, we could go for another half an hour easily. Get back to I, talking about those punk days. <laughs> I, that those are I, that we'll do that on the side. All right, that, done <laughs> deal. I agree. Uh, well, listen, Scott. Thanks for joining us here at the Music Bin. Thank you. And for uh, it. yeah, that's Scott Bass of Bass Schuler Entertainment Group, and uh, Richard Caranda is coming up next. How you doing, Richard? I'm pretty well. I'm pretty well. I'm excited about this. Uh, vaccine and i'm excited that we can open up again that's really awesome news man the sooner the better right yeah so I, you're 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 feeling pretty positive about it right we are we are we're really uh excited to get back we've got a great community you know our our little theater is a main street theater so uh it's kind of a charming 1920s kind of vaudeville you know live talky type of place but we do everything from rock and roll to stage plays musicals comedy great comedy um, yeah. actually been a, a real, I think more, more known for comedy over the last 10 years than anything, but, uh, it's really, uh, nice to be back because it's, man, this last year has just been a drag. It's just a drag. Do you remember the phone call you made to me last year when I was in, uh, well, I, I was, I'd go to California in the winter time. I'm not usually I, here. I do. I do. It was, it was actually, it was like right around this time, right? Yes, it was. It was, it was and, 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 uh. I think you were definitely feeling the uh, the impact of this whole COVID thing. It was, and and we had uh, we had a gig lined up that we were supposed to yeah. play at the at the Row. I think it was Irish Heartbeat, the Van it Morrison was. show, and uh, we were both pretty bummed. <laughs> yeah, it was a scary times, scary times. So, you know, when you did in hindsight, I guess it's all everything's hindsight. But uh, you know, when the state came in and said you can have. 100 people and then the next day they said you can have 50 people and then two days later they said you can have 10 people we uh, we freaked out we we were not uh calm about it just because we were worried you know we want sure. all the performers we want everybody to be healthy yeah and um you know sadly over this past year we we lost uh as of today we've lost 11 people tied to the theater and um you know when you say lost you they, they passed on. They they were infected and ended up at the hospitals and unfortunately oh expired. But uh, yeah, everything from uh, we had a, a, a great dad who was uh, with our educational program, who was uh, 39. Uh, so it's a, a misnomer that only old people get sick. You know, a 39 year old uh, caught it and within three days, three days uh, passed away. And then um, actually a guitarist of a wonderful band called Bourbon Country, uh, uh, Wayne Pohl. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he played our Valentine's gig and then he unfortunately passed away a month later. So we, we took it very seriously right from the get-go because we knew people that were being impacted and infected. Uh, we were terrified because, you know, February 14th, we had a concert and then, you know, uh, Warren passed on, I should say Warren, uh, Warren Pohl passed on and we were worried, you know, we were worried because there was so much hysteria in the marketplace and just in society that everybody was nervous. But uh, we're excited to be back and uh, we're, we've got a great, a great city. We've got um, a tremendous audience base. You know, we're you're, subs you're subscriber based and you've got a great subscriber list. I know you have a lot of people. Well, you've had a lot of great shows over the years. We, we're really lucky. So we'll, we'll get uh, national uh, Grammy, Tony, even Academy Award winners to swing by. And, and, you know, we keep it a healthy mix. So uh, 
this past year, we were supposed to have, you know, Amy Grant and Jane Lynch and Bob Saget and, you know, the list goes on, as well as our neighbors and our kids on stage. And, we'll and soundtracks of a generation shows. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, it's uh, Thank it just sucks saying goodbye to everybody for a year, but we're yeah. excited to get back up. We're going to take it a little cautious, uh, you know, over yeah. the next four to five months. We're going to uh, stay probably... Uh, honestly, a, a little bit within the sweet spot of about 200 people or less in a huge theater. We've got, you know, 800 seats. Yeah. So we want people to feel like they can spread out. The air will be pumping all like that. Masks will be uh, mandatory regardless. But, will, you be checking, will you be checking the, uh, the cars at the door? I've got both boost. I had my booster. I've got both shots. So that's awesome. I go on Saturday. I can't wait, actually. My wife got hers today, uh, which is well, great. But it's uh, yeah, we want people to be safe. You know, it's yeah. uh, you can't you can't really enjoy it unless you feel confident and that you're, you know, happy. Yeah. You know, you don't want people worrying. So uh, yeah, we think by next uh, September, October, we'll be back. You know, hopefully full speed. And right. uh, but in the meantime, yeah, how are you going to? Well, before I ask you how how are you going to adapt to that? Yeah, um, what worked. What didn't work? I mean, did, did, or did you just shut down completely? No, no, we only, you know, we only stopped when the government said stop. But so we've been open pretty much about 70% of the year in some capacity. Virtual? I mean, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of virtual. Within, a, within about two weeks, we, um, we put in a four camera system, an editing bay, and uh, ran it like an old time 1970s, like, you know, regional TV station. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a uh, it was really great, and that led to like wonderful comics. We had a great comedy roster uh, over the last year. We probably welcomed, holy smokes, probably about sixty comics uh, doing sets for our subscribers and members. So we kept it going that way. A right. lot of educational programs that were great. You know, a lot a lot of it digital with uh, this platform. You know, zooming and skyping and all like that. Um, a lot of dance companies who, uh, you know, depending on the time of year where we could bring live audience and dance in, we'd bring uh, the, the kids of the, the community in to do their dance recitals. Yep. And then uh, occasionally we'd have a couple of, uh, of um, musical acts, cabaret acts, very small, like, you know, duos or trios, something like that. But we miss the big shows. You know, we miss the, we miss the bus and truck. We miss the light shows. We miss all of that. <laughs> You know, it's hard to do rock and roll with three. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> we, we've downsized. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really I, no, really. In fact, I'm I'm sending you tomorrow our new digital brochure. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and and I'm not kidding. You do a show like uh, like well, we had the soul commitments at your right. at, at the Ralph. Great show. And 13 pieces or 14 pieces, whatever. Yeah. And if we had to, we could try and take it down to like a quintet or a quartet, yeah. you know, but it's not the same. And it's, it's no. just, it's just not the same. And, but I mean, we're adapting. Yeah, That's what yeah. we're doing. And, you, know. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're anxious. We're anxious. We're uh, doing a couple of outdoor events. Um, we're going to be announcing going into the summer, uh, a couple of uh, live outdoor band shells uh, right in downtown Crystal Lake. We're also pursuing a small, um, you know, kind of a hundred seat little venue uh, in collaboration with a local uh, church here in town. So oh. hopefully that'll be for more acoustic or stage plays, things like that. Is that nearby? Is that near the... Uh... It's walking distance. It's walking yeah. distance. It's, Speaking uh... of walking distance, what about that? There's like like, a, like an El Fresco, isn't there? Isn't there a little restaurant, right? Oh my uh, gosh, we've got some... Going the toward best. the train station? Yeah, we've got probably about eight restaurants in the downtown area, and they're all um, they're all doing pretty well. We've had two open in the last year, which amazes me. Like, holy smokes, how can they open? But right across the street from the theater, we had a wonderful uh, restaurateur and uh, club owner open a small gin bar that specializes in tapas and gin mixed drinks. Oh, okay. So smart. He put a... Um, it's like a garage door on the front of the facility. So he just rolls it up and puts seats out on the cafe and people can come up, 
be socially distanced out, you know, six to 12 feet away from everybody and enjoy a beautiful sunny day or yeah. know, the awning. It's just, yeah, it's really kind of nice. You know, our, our town is, uh, we're off the beaten path, you know, we're a little north, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> It's but okay. to that Northwest Pacific, Pacific Northwest line. But, yeah. you know, and I would say to like my friends uh, in Chicago, if they wanted to, you do shows during you on the weekends, you do sh any matinees or anything like that? We do. We do. So we'll uh, we'll coordinate with the Metro line. It's uh, our it's like a 54 minute uh, yes. train ride out. And you're a block from the two blocks from the. Uh, it's a, it's an easy walk right from the train right it to is, the Rouse yeah. Center. It's and we'll even give you an added discount of twenty percent if you've got your train ticket. So we want to <laughs> offset the cost. It's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. It worked for us for the last twenty years. We're about to celebrate twenty years in the space. The wow. theater itself is going to be about ninety, but it's all restored and all like that. It's really charming. So um, we're just excited to get back, and we miss everyone. We. The staff's been great. We've kept about 70% of our staff, uh, which is, you know, knock on wood, it's been a challenge, but we're so proud of them. We're so proud of the renovations that we've done. We've got a great community, wonderful restaurants. And, you know, the best part about it, the artists feel that. So there's no, um, there's no stigma between the celebrity and the audience. You know, it's not uncommon to have... Um, I, Amy Grant, for instance, Amy will, uh, you know, she'll come up, she'll do her show up in Milwaukee, and then we're the the second show on the weekend, right? Right. She'll uh, she'll go across the street to uh, Clips, which is a, a little hair place, and she'll have them do her hair, and then she'll walk down to Starbucks. Nobody hassles her, you know. She just has conversations with people. The same thing with guys like Bob Saget or. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of these other, you know, artists that people recognize, Jane Lynch, who's got a great Chicago following. Oh, yeah. And, and they feel relaxed, so they get a break. You know, they, they can take two hours while we're uh, doing sound check and stuff. We'll get the levels. They'll go out to Starbucks and just chill. And nobody, we haven't had anybody hassle anyone in Good. 20 years. It's That's been phenomenal. Great. Yeah, it's really, really nice. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, people... Uh, We'll we'll have a, a line out the door for autographs and stuff like that. But they're patient. They're very very yeah. cool. You know, very respectful. So it's cool. It was so great to see uh, your crew on the cover of was it Smart Living, the local. Uh... Yeah, yeah. We're just starting. Yeah, we're starting to roll out the new season. So uh, it, yeah, it, you're rolling. The, yeah, it cracks me up because uh, my marketing director, she's an amazing uh, lady by the name of Miriam Napnelli, and Miriam. Um, I, you know, I had taken some personal time uh, just as a little break, and I came back, and all of a sudden I noticed the season was going, and we were rolling out, and everything was coming out. And so uh, she lined up. I had a thing on WGN. I had a thing on uh, an NPR station, and then I had about two interviews for, uh, you know, magazines or papers. Yeah. And I just thought, wow, this is going from, like, a standstill <laughs> right back into the fire. Right. And uh, the, the audience response and the patron response has been great. Everybody's excited. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty progressive in our outlook. We think uh, the industry is going to rebound pretty quickly. We don't think it's going to come back as it was. We actually think it's going to be a little bit more of a younger demographic and a demographic mm -hmm. that's going to want to uh, celebrate the music of the 70s, 80s, 90s, or even the 60s. But yeah. most importantly, they're going to want to see new artists coming up. So I've had probably about eight requests for new artists that I, I had never heard of. You know, like oh. I, you know I, I try to keep up with it, but some of these were, you know, right off of like Elton John's Rocket Hour or, you, sure. know, from, uh, you know, they've been playing, you know, down in Florida and doing some taping sessions down there. And uh, so we're going to try and mix it up a little bit and really uh, try to have more musical dates and uh, really dates that people can not break the bank on their uh, wallet. You know, we're, we're right. kind of lucky. We, we don't have any debt as a theater. So, you know, we've got to deal with one of our sponsors. We'll pay a hundred bucks for the year for the rent. And uh, that gives us a huge advantage. So we can, oh, play yeah. around. and uh, I think it's going to be really a cool, and maybe not immediately, but I think definitely by 2022, we're going to be back up to speed and probably 
I would I would hope that we're doing three major events a week. Back, yeah. You know, like back what 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 our levels were like two years ago or right. 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You um, know, you, you mentioned new, younger acts, what have you. Yeah. And I, I was biting my lip because I, I, I can't, I don't think I should reveal. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just say this. Uh, I'm working on um, a project right now that is a band that's been popular for about 10 years. Oh, wow. Just 10 years. And already it's like they've got He's enough music. That <laughs> I, I'm taunting you. Yeah, no. Um but I, but they're just they're really cool, and it's a it's an indie pop rock jazz funk thing, and it's acoustic, and it's just right. knockout. And um, I think it's going to. I, I see that. I agree with you. As much as I love our soundtrack shows, you know, Irish Heartbeat and and oh, the Last Waltz, you know, the yeah, the band. Sense. I mean, you know, what we had seventeen musicians and that, you know, singers yeah. and musicians. I want so much to see those shows come back, but being realistic, I know that that may not happen. We and we, that's why we we downsize, you know, as much as we can. But this new band and other acts, there are ways to go about to get my musicians. I just have to; they just have to learn new music. You know, you know there's there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you no. the band. One, one of the uh, more requested uh, artists that we've got in over the last year is Robbie Robertson. Uh, oh, I just saw him in 2019. I saw, no, no, last year, 2020. Yeah. I saw him because he had the movie uh, and we were brothers. I, so bet, the, I bet that's what a documentary. Was. Yeah, you know, we've had that. And then uh, yeah. we've had a lot of uh, this HBO documentary on the Bee Gees. Yes. Really fueled uh, kind of party music and yep. uh, music. The whole background. disco thing again. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's cool because uh, they've, they've not only, um, the audiences seem to have embraced multicultural bands and multi-generational. Yes. I mean, I'll get, <clears throat> I'll get a couple of requests for uh, uh, urban bands or uh, musicians who are really contemporary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um so one in particular, we got a request. Uh, it cracked me up. We, get, I had, uh, we did a tour for a bunch of Girl Scouts. Uh, and, you know, every year we do, like, Eagle Scouts. They do their projects with us. And we have the Girl sure. Scouts and all this kind of stuff. Um, the Girl Scouts were in. They did their tour. And the girls, afterwards, they, they kept asking, can you bring Black Bear in? And I, I, I was really sort of, like, stupefied and dumb because I, I didn't know what the hell they were talking because it was such an odd... You know, we're kind of a suburban area. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, he's like, like, we're like halfway between Rockford and Chicago. <laughs> you know? But they're, um, you know, this digital age, these kids are so yeah. smart and they, uh, yeah. they appreciate, they appreciate. And, you know, in the same, in the same, in the exact same group, we had a, uh, one of the girls asked for, uh, you know, if you ever get a KISS tribute, my dad plays KISS all the time in the garage and we really want to see that <laughs> and they like the music yeah yeah they, yeah they the kids are not dumb they know they know all the uh you know all of the bands from the 60s 70s and 80s oh the yeah 90s i think they kind of uh they get confused at the 90s you know but um some of the contemporary artists are uh pretty cool so we're uh we're excited well I, I'm, I'm looking here now so are you saying that you, 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 you're not sure about the 90s? You, so I should cross off the list, the grunge band idea? Is oh, man, a Nirvana would be really popular. But it's, uh, you know, it's a weird, um, it's, a, I think, for, from our perspective right now, we're getting a lot of requests from those people that knew us from the, the, the actual musicians that they saw here. Yep. Or the tribute bands that were celebrating the music. Yeah. And, you know, I think somebody said it well. Um, we had somebody uh, uh, on our board say, well, you know, grab a YouTube tribute band. You know, a YouTube, uh, you know, Bono and The Edge and uh, yeah. Adam Fitton. Oh, yeah. And, um, I, you know, I kind of looked around the room and one of my board members joked. Yeah, no, one of my board members joked and said, well, why don't we just go see them at United Center when they play? And I just thought, well, that's that's not our bag. You know, we always, 
we want musicians and your teams, your bands are so amazing because they, um, they create the music authentically and beautifully and yeah. with great sound, really awesome Thanks, sound. Man. They fill the room. Thanks, man. Uh, you know, there's nobody that's, that's lost their brain who's like impersonating to the point where they've got every single move down. They, they don't try to recreate, no. they just celebrate, which right. is totally, I think, what people want. They want to go yeah. out and celebrate life. They want to get back to normal. Right. And, um, you know, some of the bands, we have a, a, a queen. Um, oh, yes. A queen tribute band and, and amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. But, yeah. Um, you know, holy smokes, I, I can't imagine the amount of energy and time that goes into perfecting not only the look, every single move, but, you know, that's a little bit more than a tribute band in a celebration. They're, they're actually paying for that replica. And yeah. uh, I will say this, we are not going to do hologram shows. I am not, I am not doing that. <laughs> I, okay, make another note of that. No okay, scratch the hologram idea. No, okay. no. You know, we uh, we don't mind the small bands like scaling back if we have to, but uh, sure. you know, like we had Rick Springfield come in with uh, his MacBook, right? His MacBook Pro and his guitar and crushed it. A great night, you know? Wow. And we've had others that have scaled back, but I think by 2022, we're going to be right back to full board. Yeah. yeah. Just the spectacle of it. That's yeah. what I want to hear. Totally. Well, now the Rouse Center is at 26 North William Street in Crystal Lake. It's just a two block south walk from the train station. And uh, it's a marvelous, beautiful facility. There's a ton of, as, as, as you alluded to, there's a ton, eight or nine restaurants right there. Great food. And they miss, you know, it, a, a place like the Rouse Center, uh, you know, when, when, when you stop doing shows, those guys suffer too. Everybody oh suffered in this you know, pandemic. It's, it's been bad. It's, it's been terrible. It's been terrible. You know, one of the benefits to living in a kind of a small um, bedroom community or agri bedroom community, you know, about half our population commutes into Chicago. Yeah. The other half just stays out here. Um, I, I, I honestly, having been in New York and I helped redevelop 42nd Street uh, over 18, 18 years, I can honestly tell you there is something so charming and rare about yeah. Midwestern cities. Yeah. And mid Midwestern people are the nicest. I, I have seen people in the dead of winter during these snowstorms line up outside our, you know, like the Olympic Cafe. It's a little yeah. um, diner uh, just to, you know, do takeaway. And it's yeah. been a block long. Yeah. And uh, they really care. They really are a welcoming, open community. Uh, you know, we had... Uh, a lot of civil strife this past year you yes. know, with Black Lives Matter and all, yep. all these other uh, events. And our community is, uh, I, I would, you know, I would characterize it as a kind of a, a, a Caucasian community. It's probably mm -hmm. like high 90%, you know. But we had four days of observance and marches and, yep. um, and reflection that the yeah. libraries and the churches, they all coordinated. Sure. And it was so wonderful to see everybody embrace everyone in a loving, yep. cool way. And you know, it always ends with music. All of those, all of those events ended with the crowd singing. Yeah, and singing. You know, everything from gospel to uh, you know songs from pop culture. And they were, and that that really sums up who Crystal Lake is. They care yeah. about everyone. They really celebrate life, and they're sensible. So. You know, I know. I know a lot of the a lot of the politicians. They're, they're we're about to vote here pretty soon, right? And I, I can say that, uh, like the, the the mayor who is up, but because he filled in your 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 other mayor, and I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Dan, Aaron, Aaron, Shepard. Aaron, Aaron. He's guy. very young guy, very progressive, and yeah. it it he really stepped it up for many years. And uh, Haig, who took over for him, yeah. um, I, I love the comment. <clears throat> excuse me, that I read. He said uh, that uh, uh, the, the people that he selected for the city council were all marvelous. Any one of us could be yeah. the, the stand in, you know, uh, you know, to, there's no replacing and there's no filling his shoes. I, I know you've got a hard stop. You've got to get going here. But yeah, yeah. before b before you leave, I wanted to ask you, is that cap 
a Dodgers? Are you a Dodgers fan or are you a Loyola yeah, you know, Academy? So, so I, I will say, is that, though, what, my, is uh, that Loyola? Is that, come no, on. No, no, it's the Dodgers. It's the oh, Dodgers. man. Yo. I, <laughs> hey, I, I just got to say it. I, I, I'm a lefty. I make no jokes about it. Uh, but um, the one thing I was absolutely thrilled with when I found out that the owners of the Dodgers are everybody from basketball players to like Billie Jean King to yep. rock and roll legends to, uh, you know, boxers. I'm a sure. big boxing fan. I just thought the ownership of the Dodgers was so cool. And they have yeah. some of the best pitching that Chicago should have should have secured years ago. So, I, I just saw that the Cubs former uh, pitcher, you Darvish, a former Dodger, is now the starting pitcher opening day for the San Diego Padres. Right. And we'll close. We'll close with that. It's eight o'clock. I love baseball. I love baseball. <laughs> I do. I do, too. We can talk baseball all day. I know. Hey, listen, Richard, thanks a lot, man. I'm looking forward to getting our, our guys together and the soundtracks of a generation and bringing our shows in. And uh, wishing you, always wishing you the best and, uh, um, you know, subscribing myself to the, to the Rouse Center. And, and we, uh, we, love, we love coming out there. So well, we good love luck you, man. to everything. And, uh, be safe, wear those masks, and we'll get through this together, man. We'll get through this together. We're all in this together. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Richard right, Caranda from the Rouse Center. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Bye-bye. Woo! I want to thank Richard Caranda and Scott Bass for joining us here on the Music Band. Apologies to B.J. Jones from Northlight Theater. We were hoping to do a three-way roundtable, but the time clash just didn't work out. We'll snag him in the future for another post-pandemic discussion here on the Music Band. Now, next week, we're going to be at it with my friend Sal Canzone, Chris Forte, Rick Dembski, all from the show The Last Waltz. That's our tribute to the Martin Scorsese tribute which was a tribute to the final concert and a rockumentary to the band, the band, their final show. It's awesome. What a great show that was. Hey, until then, just keep sharing our, our posts, okay, on Facebook. Check us out on the website. Uh, you know, look us up on Insta. Tell your friends about us. And remember what I always like to say. I got to make sure I get this right because in rehearsal, I, I was off camera here. I mean, hang on, I'm getting it lined up here. Put it on my forehead. There! Music heals the soul. <laughs> Credits, please, Mr. Kirk. And uh, I will just fade to black. Bye, 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 bye.